Hello guys, welcome to Creative Chess channel. Today we'll go on with Rook, uh, Rook uh, and Games. And uh, here you see that uh, today we're going to speak about symmetrical structure on one side of the board and uh, about passed pawn on another side of the board. Uh, I'm going to show you the game between Botvinnik and Boleslavski played in 1941. And after this game I'm going to show you a very funny uh, game which also was played uh, but not by Botvinnik. And uh, you'll see how even uh, very experienced grandmasters can see uh, can make silly mistakes uh, in uh, rooks and games. Uh, so uh, here it was why to move, guys. Give you a second to understand what's going on, and please, uh, what move would you suggest for white? What is the best move here? Guys, remember, if you have an opportunity to put your rook behind your pawn and then push it, always do it. Here, white has such an opportunity and played rook to b1. Of course, it's the most obvious move. If you, uh, instead of rook b1, would suggest h3, just to make an escape to bring our king, this move is already bad, because in this case, uh, black could play rook to b2, attack our pawn, and then we'll have to play rook to e4, and it's not the best way for the rook to stay. That's why only rook b1 is a perfect move, and of course, Botvinnik played it. His opponent uh, played uh, king to f7, but it is a bad move. If you are playing for a weaker side, uh, you should uh, try to stop uh, the pawn the earlier the better. Uh, he should have played uh, rook to c6 and after b5 block it earlier. Yeah, guys, so remember this rule. If you are uh, playing for the weaker side, just, mm, uh, just uh, block the pawn earlier. Probably anyway, position is lost, but in this case, uh, white has to uh, be uh, more precise in this case. And do you still have chances for a draw here? But instead of uh, this, uh, black played uh, king to f7, but Vinik was pushing the pawn, and uh, now rook to c8, only now rook is going to block. Uh, now, but Vinik is not in a hurry, guys, and be also careful, don't push this pawn too far, while your king is far away also, because uh, but Vinik played h3, but if he would be in a hurry, uh, it would be very, very bad, because in this case, uh, black can approach the pawn, just take it, and if we exchange, it turns out that it's a draw because uh, bl black uh, will have an opposition and uh, white doesn't have any uh, squares to uh, attack the pawns. So that's why be careful guys, don't push uh, your rook, uh, your pawn, sorry, too far, especially when your king is somewhere uh, on h1, yes, it's too far on g1. Uh, so. That's why after rook to, to c8, but Vinik just uh, play the move h3. He uh, is opening the space for his king to uh, join the game. Rook to c8. Black starts approaching the pawn, but now, guys, you see already it is possible to exchange, of course, because if black takes, we just take, and now the queen, uh, the king easily uh, comes into the black camp, capture all the pawns and promote his pawns. That's why already now for black it's impossible to take the pawn, but uh, black decides to blockade uh, the white pawn with their king. And uh, now the rook is fr free to do what it wants, maybe to attack the pawns, uh, but, uh, but Vinik made us, oh sorry, but, but Vinik makes a super cool move here, and this move so again, guys, after uh, king to b7 blockading, uh, he just leaving the pawn and he is going to attack these pawns. Still, there is no opportunity for black to take the pawn because we would return and take his uh, rook and then win this game. 
That's why uh, Black decides to protect the pawn on g7 with a very passive but the only move rook to uh, g8. Uh, now White is protecting the pawn from another side from the 6th rank. Okay, have a look. Black doesn't have a lot of uh, uh, moves. Actually, uh, he has only uh, one move with his king. And uh, white start approaching, black is waiting and pushing the pawns. G4. And uh, after king h4, again king to b7, white plays a6 finally. Finally we play a6. We, are, we should have this pawn and exchange is uh, that pawn for these two pawns. We are taking. He protects. Here already, guys, have a look. It's impossible to uh, put the king here because we will just exchange the uh, the rooks. That's why he played uh, just a waiting move with his rook. But anyway, so we play this uh, rook to c7, and after g5, take take. It turns out that we have this passed pawn. Uh, and of course, it's winning position for white. Let's have a look uh, what was going on. So we cut off the king and just play uh, g6. So guys, uh, in my previous video about rook and games, I told you how to win, and there were five ways of winning this for white. In this. Uh, in this position, uh, I just prefer the uh, the most uh, popular, the most popular variation to win. It's called the bridge. If you forget, guys, those who don't forget, just okay. Can you tell me how to win for white this position? How to build a bridge? Let's be workers. Let's be builders, and let's build a bridge, guys. Here. So what should white do? Yeah, so first of all, we should uh, ask the king to retreat a bit. And after that, we put our rook on the fourth rank. Actually, here after rook h2 move and uh, king to f7, uh, black resigned. Because actually, the white is going to promote the pawn. Let's play a bit uh, more. So if, for example, black makes check. We go with the king. Again, we want to promote. One more check. Here, be careful, guys. Of course, not here because the pawn will be captured, but here. And in case it is going to make more checks, we'll just make made the bridge. We finished building it. And uh, so next uh, move is to promote the pawn. That's why uh, here in this position already after king to f7, black reside. So again, guys, if you have an opportunity to put your rook uh, behind your pawn, do it, push it. Don't be too fast, because otherwise, while your king is still here, the king can approach and capture a pawn. But then, uh, so just to bring your king into the game and uh, go try to capture the pawn, push your own pawns. And uh, this is our plan for the, for such positions. But funny game, funny game was played by Mark Dvoretsky, who is a, was a famous Soviet uh, chess coach. Actually, he was playing uh, against, uh, as far as I remember, yes, against Kuprechik. Uh, I think he was a grandmaster, quite a famous one. In uh, 1976, we was played this game. Actually, it was black to move, and black uh, made uh, quite a strange move, rook to b7. And uh, as I told you, oh sorry, as I told you, uh, it's good when uh, we put our rook behind the pawn. So uh, Varetsky was very happy to see this move, and actually, it's a bad move. And Varetsky had two options. Uh, how to put the rook back. So first to put it like that. Yes, and then uh, like uh, Batvinik, we just, uh, he might push the pawn and the king is already next to the opponent's pawns. 
or there was a, another opportunity just to play for example uh, in the situation to play a5 and then to put the rook on a4 one uh, move is bad and another uh, another couple of moves are good so guys so which plan would you prefer to play like that and like this or to play like that and like this it seems the same but Dvoretsky chose uh, the wrong variation he uh, decided that it would have been super cool to play a5 okay his opponent uh, play rook to b3 and uh, Dvoretsky played here okay he's giving the pawn and uh, just playing a6 he's very close to promotion uh, he expected that uh, black would play something like uh, g5 for example uh, he would play like this and uh, he considered that it is the only way to stop the white pawn but of, obviously here it's a completely lost position because white just take uh, here and promote their pawn uh, so that's why Dvoretsky was uh, sure that he was winning here because guys in this position have a look what else how can uh, white stop the pawn but his opponent uh, found super cool move guys i uh, offer you to stop the video and try to find uh, black's idea uh, yourself so what to do how to stop the pawn uh, or maybe not to stop and have some other ideas how uh, black played here and uh, finish the game in a draw so guys hope you are ready of course not uh, g5 because uh, it was really uh, winning for white but he played a super cool move uh, king to e7 e6 and it turned out that after a7 for example black would just checkmate white because after g5 king h5 and uh, king f7 there is no way to protect uh, from checkmate actually white even losing here instead of winning that's why after king the 2 6 there would have been only one move to protect and this move uh, would be g5 but in this case black takes take and now they're ready to stop the pawn and white doesn't have any pawns any more pawns so that's why sooner or later they'll capture the pawn and it will be a draw so that's how the game finished after such moves after rook of eight they both agreed to the draw so if we return to the initial position rook b7 was a bad move and uh, white instead of this idea should have played this put a rook here and have a lot of chances for win yeah so as you see guys uh, rook and rook and uh, end games are very tricky i hope you like my video please subscribe to my youtube chess channel see you in my next videos and bye bye